All right, can you clear it up for us? What what was yeah, opinion? What, what was so opinion? Listen, what was fact? Well, I mean, we all you know, you guys are on probably four hours a day. Well, how long are you on a day? Four yep. or something yeah, like that. Four, four yeah, hours a day. I'm rambling for three, and so I was told, um, you know, after the, the, Caleb knows he's going to be the number one pick. He, he you know, like everybody knows it, like it's done. Um, the all the exact. I mean, everybody knew two years before Andrew Luck. They knew when he was a sophomore. You know, he's Trevor Lawrence. Two years when he won the Natty as a freshman. Everybody knew Caleb's going to be the number one guy. It's not close. He's a significantly better prospect than Drake May, and he knows it. And he's got a lot of self awareness. Um, Caleb hides from people. Like, he's not going to the Super Bowl. He didn't want to go to this stuff. He's not going out. He sits in his apartment. Like, he's a good kid. But there's a lot surrounding him. Thank God he's in L.A. where he can get lost. But he's – his dad, though, is a big personality, strong opinions. Don't know him, met him once. And I was told about – I don't know if it was eight, nine weeks ago. Like, it, there were some real misgivings about Chicago. And, Jesus, Justin Fields can't win games. And he's super talented. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff about that. And so when I was talking on the show yesterday – um, and an addendum, by the way, I was told 15 minutes ago that five NFL teams have called USC to do a background check on Caleb, and they're going to offer the Bears packages to get the number one pick. So <laughs> you, heard, you heard that 15 minutes ago. 15 minutes ago from somebody I trust that USC has been called by uh, just shy of a half a dozen teams doing background checks. Caleb Williams is going to get – Chicago could keep fields, go to number two, go to number – I wasn't told who made the calls. Okay. I was told there's going to be offers for that number one pick. That's how good Caleb is. So you could keep Justin Fields. I wouldn't, but you could. You could move down a few spots. But I've been told this is a better prospect significantly than Andrew Luck by – Three executives, two with rings. He's really special. Yes. And what I generally do with my sources, I call GMs that don't need the player in question. So I'm calling GMs that don't need a quarterback. So I'm not getting, you know, I'm not getting misinformation. You know, well, I, I called two GMs last year or the year before on Kenny Pickett a couple of years ago. They had quarterbacks. And they both said he's a third-round grade, but the Steelers need a quarterback. Well, we were right. He's not very good. Right. So um, I a lot of my sources on Caleb are teams that don't need quarterbacks. So I feel like I get a more honest opinion. He is viewed as above Mahomes at this point. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to get Andy Reid as a coach. But so anyway, I was told eight, nine weeks ago, there were a lot of concerns about Chicago's mess. We don't know if Eberflus is the guy. We don't know if Ryan's the guy. We don't know about the ownership group. There's been questions where they're going to play. Detroit and Green Bay are stacked rosters. Kevin O'Connell is a brilliant, brilliant guy. Wait until he gets his quarterback. And there was just a lot of concerns. Now, my guess is that probably mostly came from the dad side because Caleb just hides. Great kid hides. But then when I talked yesterday about, and I said what I said, somebody reached out very close to Caleb and said, that's a little hot. We don't, we're not anti-Chicago. Caleb wants a big, aggressive, passionate city. Like he does not want to go to a Sunbelt team that tarps off the upper deck. He <laughs> wants he wants a big, loud, crazy, passionate, all-in city. So let's back and up that, for a second, Colin. That's incredible stuff. And if I got that information or you had that information eight weeks ago or yeah. whatever, my God, I'd be tempted to like use it or form a take around it or whatever. Why did it come out yesterday? Was it just the happenstance of being in the middle of a segment and, and you keep talking? Like, why did it come out well, yesterday? Well, first of all, I had said about eight, nine weeks ago, and again, yesterday it wasn't a segment. I just, it was, I think it was herd line news and I said something. But one of the things I had said is don't be surprised if teams don't make an offer to Chicago. And the reason I didn't form a big opinion is because when I had heard it eight or nine weeks ago, it was right after the season. Remember when the story came out? I think it was right after the season when it was like Caleb's dad. He wants to restructure contracts. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. And I made one call, and it was like, that's nonsense. So, and then it was around that call 
that time that I heard like, you know, they got some misgivings about Chicago. This it's, is Ibra Flu's going to be there. It's, I'm not sure if we knew at the time. I think we did. We may not have. So I got a lot of different things at the time. And I think I may have mentioned it. There's some concerns. And then I didn't form anything on it because it was just sort of a, you know, kind of a feeling. And so yesterday when I said it, I said, yeah, kind of, there's some, a little anti-Chicago. And it may have been too hot. Because they don't want to be painted as that. Caleb doesn't want to be a villain. He, he, he like he's he knows there's no perfect spot to land, and so they were selling me last night. Hey, there's a lot of good things about Chicago. Yeah, I was also told nine weeks ago they got concerns about Chicago. I think both are true. Mm-hmm. There's nothing definitive. There is no perfect spot. I mean, seriously. Did we think Houston would work out like that? No, there's, def- there's definitely no perfect spot. I've actually been making the case, though, Colin, that Chicago's a better spot for number one picks than any in recent history because they weren't the worst team in the NFL. They got gifted the pick. They have DJ Moore. They've got t- 10 cap space. They have the ninth pick overall. They've got a top 10 pick at right and tackle. That's Caleb- yeah, that's what Caleb's people said last night. They're like, it looks like Houston. It's kind of the – now – what I said to them was, well, yes, but what I think people are forgetting is D'Amico Ryans has a long runway to coach. If Eberflus goes one and four, he's in trouble. Yes. They could flush out the entire – this is what makes this job a bad job to me, a bad space. People say, what about Washington? Dan Quinn's got a four-year runway. What about Houston? D'Amico Ryans has a runway. If Eberflus has a bad September, Caleb's on his second staff by year two, maybe by Thanksgiving. That's not good. In the history of the NFL, name the quarterbacks whose first coach was a disaster and they went on to riches. Yeah, no, we've, well, t- we've talked about Justin Herbert's about to happen right now with Jim that's, Harbaugh, yeah, and it'll be his right. third coach. And, <laughs> by the way, and and that's right. It is that, that and, and it's taken by the way like four years or three years to get it right. This appears to be. A very rare situation where finally the Chargers, after butchering the first two hires, get it right. right. It does appear like that. And you're right. That's a great comp. Are the Bears going to hire? Like, I'll, I'll throw a name out to you. I think Vrabel pulled himself out after the Chargers weren't interested. I think Vrabel said next year there's going to be seven quarterbacks available potentially, and one of them could be Caleb. And it, I think Vrabel next year is going to enter. Philadelphia, Dallas. Both could have new coaches. Buffalo, sorry, you can't keep losing home playoff games as a favorite with Josh Allen. Um, Derek Carr, uh, Dak Prescott. So next year, there's six, seven up to Trevor Lawrence. What if Doug Peterson can't turn that around? He's out. Yeah, so I think Caleb if Caleb Williams. is, I think if Caleb is as good as he is, the Bears' job will be attractive, and he'll either make Eberflus win or he'll make someone else win. What we're trying to figure out is if we're going to be faced with a situation that was Elway or Eli. No, and- no, 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 no. So I was told, I was told last night, Caleb does not want to be a villain. He he doesn't want to be a villain. He knows there's no perfect landing spot. The concerns I was told eight, nine weeks ago, I'm not backtracking. They're real. Right, but if the They're Bears want to draft Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams is fine being a Bear? Yes, he won't pull. He won't. I, if I was his agent, I would, I would, I think I would voice concerns about, I don't have the confidence Chicago talk host show hosts have about Chicago. They've had one winning season in 11 years. They haven't had a top 15 offense in a decade in a league that's trying to create parity, they break the system. They've never had a great quarterback. Jay Cutler, I think, is your all-time leader. He'd be like the Packers' fourth-best quarterback. There's no disputing and, any of that. But that was yeah. true about the Bengals before Burrow, and it no, was no, no, true no, 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 It was no, true no, on some no, level no, about no. Kansas Car- City before Carson Mahomes. Palmer and Boomer. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, but they, they were thought Boomer, to be a mess. Esiason. Mm. Boomer Esiason, MVP. Carson Palmer, right. great. Uh, Kenny Anderson. They had hit. They had had very good offenses and very robust quarterback play. The Bears have never had a great quarterback. Now we know Ever. we know that, but 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 you know the current situation with the Bears it it is it is a good one. I, I'm curious if like it, it, do yeah, you, I dispute that? I don't think it's a good one. Oh oh, but but they have a really good number one wide receiver. They have a growing offensive yeah. line. 
Um, they've okay. got a really yeah. good, a really good offensive coaching staff that they just hired. Uh, oh wait, time out. Let's let's slow down. That staff gets blown out if they don't win ten games next year. I don't necessarily agree yeah. with that. Well, what, what do you think the next coach is going to keep them? Nobody does that. No, but it, they, they could promote the offensive coordinator or promote Thomas Brown, who was an assistant and head so there's coach another under McVay. Unproven coordinator as a head coach. That, That's the answer. That that definitely. Listen, I wanted them to fire Matt Eberflus and hire Jim Harbaugh or hire Ben Johnson so ask, that they would ask yourself this. Yeah. Ask yourself this. In 2021, 12 wins by offensive coaches in the playoffs. One playoff win by a defensive coach in 2022. Yeah, 12 playoff wins by offensive coaches. One by defensive coaches. Andy Reid, Shanahan, either wins this year nine and four. Defensive coaches aren't winning. The last ten coaches in the Super Bowl all offensive. You have the only defensive coach in the lame duck season in the division. Lafleur's excellent. Kevin O'Connell's excellent. Look at this league right now. Reid. Jim Harbaugh, McVay, Shanahan, Peyton, Stefanski, Shane Steichen, Mike McDaniel, Matt LaFleur. These are elite offensive coaches who are taking backups in some cases to the playoffs. Matt LaFleur is 10 and 28 with Justin Herbert. He's 3 and 12 in division. Mm -hmm. We don't know if your president's good. Your GM could be. Your coach on the hot seat. You can't win in division. The, the Packers and Lions are stacked offensive teams in an offensive league. The Bears are still celebrating the 85 Bears at games. <laughs> they're the, they're, you, you are preaching to the choir on the offensive coach v. defensive coach, and you are preaching to the choir on serious questions about Eberflus. I, all I want to know is that Caleb Williams, if they draft him, is willing to come here. And, yeah, Caleb, and, and, Ma- yeah, and McIntyre, yeah. McIntyre said yesterday, Colin, when you were doing that, because we played the audio – he was like, you're sitting on stuff. And people want to be like, you're a hot take guy. You're just doing this for attention. Yeah. And I'm like, Colin knows everyone in the league. He knows USC. He's at the games. So I immediately gave that credence and it was informed. And when McIntyre said you were sitting on stuff, I was like, oh, God, what else are you sitting on from, <laughs> from Caleb's camp that we don't know? So please let me sleep at night and tell me what you were sitting on. How about that? Yeah. So, no, I mean, he said I was sleeping on stuff. And I said, well, yeah, I don't. Guys, you do this. I do this. I don't report everything I know. Of course. You don't report. I have sort I have a I have a friend right now. Like for instance, when Tom Telesco got the job um, with the Raiders, he had it thirty six hours before. Tom's my friend. I'm not gonna put that out there. He he asked me I am gonna call me, he said I'm gonna take the job. I wasn't gonna I would have broken the story. I didn't break the story because Tom's a friend. He had a family. He had people to tell. When you know, when I when I broke the story on Brady to the Buccaneers, I had to go through it for ten minutes. I went with that because it was a very trusted friend, and he told me I could go for it. But you guys, I mean, I have a story right now. I'm sitting on. Yeah. Why? Because I don't want to burn a source. So we all have. You know, you you accumulate no more bees with honey than vinegar. Okay. I don't report everything I know on Caleb. When the stuff came out about Caleb, um, uh, what was the yeah, the stuff came up about his dad's going to break break this and that. I, I went on and said nonsense. There's been so much like that he want that he wants equity in a team. That- I I downplayed all of that. Right. Okay. But I was told after the season there's stuff that worries him. He's the best prospect since Elway. Yes. Yes, he's worried. They have the only defensive coach in the division. The roster's got a great, a bona fide number one. He likes the deep. I was told last night, Chicago's a big, loud, pressurized city. Loves that. Jordan, Bulls, he likes that. I was told he thinks the defense is really good. He doesn't have to win by shootout. He loves DJ Moore. He thinks the O-line is better than people think. He doesn't think it's a disaster, but yes. And, and I said this to somebody. If Caleb was your son, and he was the number one lawyer or whatever. He was the number one tech guy or whatever in the market. And he had to go, right? He didn't have choices. He had, he had limited. Wouldn't you be like, 
yeah, this company doesn't win a lot. Absolutely. Company, We've talked about that kind of thing for a lot of years, like the player empowerment and the NFL being the NFL draft being something that isn't fair makes all the sense. I, I think, Colin, this kind of conversation is incredibly valuable for our listeners and yours and your viewers in terms of media literacy, because you know stuff. We get told stuff and then you use it or you don't use it and things like that. And people don't understand. So this is helpful. You do know stuff about Caleb. So we we understand. Do you ever consider prefacing a take with this is just me speculating or oh, I this say, I, I say or, literally or, every. Yeah, I mean, guys, one of the things. Yeah, I mean, listen. I work at a company that got sued for billions of dollars for questioning voting. So <laughs> I'm very and I I'm very aware of I say this all the time and, and one of the reasons my show works on radio and TV and simulcast mostly don't with sports radio. But I'm always really proud that I'm doing a three hour radio show on TV. PTI is a huge hit. I'm six times longer. I'm doing a solo show. So I always say I'm I'm Steph Curry. I miss shots. I, this is a, I'm not like Jay Glazer with a 90-second Sunday report where I have to get every word right or Tom Rinaldi with an essay. I'm shooting shots. I try to preface stuff constantly. I'll say, this is my opinion, or I've been told this. I don't know. Very rarely do I say definitively blank, blank, blank. And when I get it, I say it. I said this morning as I did this rant, I said, guys, I got a call from Caleb's camp. And they went, Colin, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't hate Chicago. Because Caleb doesn't watch any of this stuff or listen. But Caleb was told by his cousins or buddies, oh, coward said you. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I think we texted the clip to Carl Williams, Colin, because we're trying to get him on. We're like, what the hell's going on? Are you not coming to Chicago? And he's like, talk to our publicist. (laughs) So his dad, I think, runs a little, he's a big personality. Caleb's not a big personality. He's just a great kid. Really self-aware, bright kid, really emotional, all about winning. But I, I think sometimes the quarterback dad thing, they can run hot. And I, you know, I, I'm not denying or backpedaling at all. There were some concerns I was told eight, nine weeks ago, like, hell, man, it's, this has got to work. That probably mostly came from what I was hearing from maybe a dad side of it. And maybe I was too hot on it yesterday. But that's why today I came out and said, hey, let me, you know, they call. I try to give people – the latest information I have, like Danny, one of the things I think you and I talked about once off the air is that I've never understood the premise that you shouldn't flip flop. And I always say this, if you were going to get on a flight and the pilot said, listen, we got new information. We're not going to take off for 15 minutes because I don't want to go straight up into a lightning storm. Would you be like, nope, (laughs) I want the initial radar yesterday and we're going to stick with it. If you went to a hospital and they came in and said, listen, your surgery with your eight-year-old daughter, we're going to try something here because we've got new information. Would you say, nope, just stick with what you're going to do? We live in a new information society. So when I get it, I give it to the audience. But but I have to fill three hours a day, and if I have information, I say, this is what I think. Yeah. Sometimes people react to what I say and say, hey, Colin, can you kind of sandpaper it a little bit? That can-? And I'm like, okay, and then I'll give you that information. I'm never somebody afraid to go, hey, here's the latest thing I have. It, it's, it's, I said this yesterday. I still believe this. Here's what, here's what I have today. I don't think that's backpedaling. It's just new information. And I said this today, like um, not to eat up your show, by the way. I'm eating up your show. You have commercials. I'm sorry. I, I apologize to your advertisers. You're, please. Please don't apologize to okay. them. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. I'll accept so the apology said, on their behalf. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> so I said this today on my show. I said, the reason the Niners keep ending up in NFC championships with different quarterbacks is because they're never concerned about being right. They're concerned about getting it right. So Garoppolo, Trey Lance, Brock Purdy, if Purdy sucks in the Super Bowl, they'll draft another quarterback. The Giants are trying to be right. So they double down on a quarterback they reach for. Programs, a complete franchise, abyss. I am a believer in, I tell you what I know. People react to what I know and what I say. I have no problem going, hey, I'm going to do more homework on that, or I got new information. What I was told nine weeks ago was there was concerns about Chicago. I think over time, Caleb's done a lot of homework. They're trying to be more reasonable, and he does not want to – he's not comfortable – 
being a villain. He it's not who he is. But this stuff's fluid. Information's fluid. It, it's and by the way, I still have a show to do. You still have a show to do. I've had people call. I've never had anybody call and yell at me a source, but I had a source last year on something completely whiff. And I said, yeah, I whiffed on that. I haven't had that happen to me a lot, but uh, I'm not bad. Nine weeks ago, I think there was real concern about Chicago in that camp. And I think now they just don't want to be painted as we hate Chicago. They, well, they, they, they see it. They see an Avenue with Chicago. It looks like Houston, but I would argue that Detroit and green Bay are better than people in Houston's division. I think Green Bay and Detroit are stacked rosters. Well, next time you talk to him, tell him that Burrow and Lawrence and Luck all walked into the worst team in the league when they drafted him. He's walking into a seven-win team in the easier conference for an iconic franchise that reveres the 85 Bears that's never had a 4,000-yard passer, never had a 30-touchdown quarterback, and he immediately becomes the best quarterback in franchise history, and he will own the best city in the world if he's even half the quarterback he's supposed to be. Will you tell them that for me, Colin? I, 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 I just was on the phone earlier today after my show with one of Caleb's people, and so... You know, he, he he. This thing is he's kind of taking a life of its own. He doesn't care. He doesn't stay on. He's off Twitter. He when he posts something, somebody on his small. He doesn't have an entourage. His small team does. But it's listen. We got until April. What is it? Twenty fourth. Twenty. When's the draft? April twenty fourth. Yeah, it's the third week of April. This I will tell you. The Bears will get multiple calls for the pick. Sure. That I will definitively, <laughs> absolutely say right now yes. they will get calls multiple for that pick do not be surprised if it's not at least five uh, no doubt it, especially because they've got fields as an option and all the other quarterbacks so it, as we live with this up until then i'm trying to figure it out do we think that was it caleb with the concerns was it the dad with the concerns is caleb less concerned is his dad less concerned do we have to worry about his dad strong arming the situation and creating an eli uh situation well, like can you clear no, any of Cal- that up for us yeah caleb controls it caleb's gonna do what caleb wants to he's very strong right like caleb's not gonna let anybody control him dads are dads I, do I believe the concerns are more heated from his dad's side? Yeah, yeah. But it's also Caleb's career, and there are no sec- there are no reboots very rarely in this league. But I was told today when I asked him, he, he said he, he's not going to do an L.A. He just doesn't – that's not what – they're not redoing the league structure. He doesn't want to pull an L.A. If they draft him, he's, he's going to go. But I don't think – I, I don't think I, you know, I think you guys view Chicago as a much better landing spot than I do and people around the league do because I think if Iberflus gets off to a bad start in an offensive league, I think the staff gets blown out. They can say they won't, but one in six in Chicago talk radio you're done. I think that's definitely possible. And I like I said, listen, man, I want Caleb to save the Bears from themselves. That's what I that's what that's I am rooting right. for. Yes. Like like Burrow saved the Bengals from being the Bungles. That is the rooting interest here, at least from this talk show host. Yeah, I think I think he's good enough to do it. Um, I think the only thing you and I disagree with, I don't think the situation's as good as you view it. I I think it's hard to have one winning season in 11 years in the NFL. That is hard. It really is hard to that because that means you're going to have multiple chances at a quarterback and multiple chances with a coach. You'd think you'd nail a few. Trust right? me. Like, trust, trust me. We've been living it. Yeah, you'd, th- you'd think you'd nail, we'd nail more of a few. They should have drafted Mahomes. They drafted Trubisky. 